Hello, and what is up, YouTube? I am Unrested with the questions you requested. This is JFAC. Japan's frequently asked questions. A user has just sent me a article from a website called Diply.com. 16 things you'll only see in Japan. Is it true? Let's read along and find out. Starting with number one, it says Cuddle Cafes. This one isn't new by any stretch. The phenomenon of cuddle cafes went viral a few years ago after they became a big hit in Japan in 2012. I can say that these did exist for a very short time as of the date that they said, January 2012. They didn't do very well. Um, pretty much what you did is you paid an exorbitant amount of money to cuddle with a snack girl or hostess girl or maid cafe girl for a 60 minute sprawl of time, uh, sometimes longer depending on how much you want to pay really. And I just remember, I don't remember exact prices or anything, I've never actually been to one myself, but I remember the listing prices being like insane, like something like, I think it was something like $60 for 30 minutes and then 120 for an hour and just, I mean, you know, it, if you want to do it, it's up to you. Now there's no like, Anything more than spooning is pretty much what you can do. You can sit there and uh, spoon with the girl in bed, and I think beyond that, if you get too touchy-feely, uh, security might remove you, even though there's probably not security at a lot of these places. It's probably just a, a house mama. So that's what these were, and apparently from what I've heard, and this is coming from my friends who live down in Shinsaibashi where these actually existed, they said these did not last very long. That for the most part, people weren't willing to pay this much money to just lay with someone. If they're going to pay 120 bucks, they're going to buy a prostitute. So, you know, you're going to go <laughs> full way, you're going to dive full in when you pay that much money. So that's why these didn't do too well. Um, most of them got converted into maid cafes from what I've heard. So, yes, true fact, it did exist for a short amount of time. Hentai in manga. In case you've never actually seen real-life pornography from Japan, let me tell you that the majority of the time, it's all censored. So-so. Usually, the genitals are blurred out somewhat. They're somewhat pixelated, and that goes back to this really archaic rule. It's kind of strange. What fun is that, right? Well, whether the issue is caused by or the cause of production of so much animated smut, I'm not sure. But one thing is certain, the Japanese sure do love themselves some anime, whether it be the X-rated kind or otherwise. Japan is famous for both manga and anime, and on top of those videos, the country uses more paper for comics than toilet paper. Wow, I did not know that. If that is true, wow, amazing. Um, you know, we do have the highest amount of anime and uh, highest amount of manga sold in all of the world. I mean, that's pretty obvious because Japan is the number one maker of it. They created it. There are other countries that do make their own manga and anime. But it says, number two, hentai and manga. I didn't really hear them touch on hentai. Now, a lot of people in other countries call, I guess, porn pornographic anime or pornographic manga hentai. But really, the word itself, hentai, literally just means a pervert, someone who is a pervert. Um, so it's actually an incorrect use. Just like the word otaku, a lot of people say, I'm an otaku. Well, really, otaku just means a mania for something, and you actually have to put a word in front of that, the noun that you are a maniac for. For example, if you are a Gundam otaku, you are a Gundam nerd. Um, a lot of time, this word is also used incorrectly as well. Adult adoption. Believe it or not, statistics, which I will not provide for you, oh, great sources, show that in 2011, more than 90% of adoption in Japan was adult males between the age of 20 and 30. I don't even need to read any further to tell you this is definitely true, but there's a really good reason behind this. Um, it's not that they're like, oh, I can't wait to adopt a big old baby adult. It's because when a man passes a business on in Japan, if they pass it on to a family member, the government can't take a big chunk of taxes. So what they do is if they have an apprentice, oftentimes they'll adopt that apprentice as their own son so that when they hand off the company, everything's kept within the family, all the taxes aren't collected, and they're able to keep a larger percentage of their own shares and et cetera, et cetera. It's pretty much a loophole in the government taking more than they deserve from people handing over businesses. The world's oldest company, I think I've read this one before, this is number four, the Kongo Gumi Company, a Japanese construction company founded in 578 AD, earns the distinction as the world's oldest ongoing independently run company until 2006, when it was then purchased and absorbed by a subsidiary. 
That's 1,428 years. Yes, this is true. This company did exist all that time. Um, that's what happens when your country has years and thousands and thousands and thousands of years of history. Um, that's, that's not that odd. Um, the reason you don't see that in America is because America hasn't had, you know, established industrialization for that long. Five bosses encouraging you to sleep on the job. Okay, so number five, bosses encouraging you to sleep on the job. Mm, there's a bit of truth, but this is always kind of false too. They always just show people like sleeping at the job in these pictures. Even here it says, Tokyo, we have a problem. And it shows people in Tokyo sleeping at their job. For the most part, naps at your job is during your lunch break. And some businesses are so, I guess, how should I say, approving of you taking a nap during your lunch break or accommodating that they'll even have capsules for you to sleep in. If you don't know what a capsule hotel is, just go Google that right now. It's like a tiny bed tube that you can lay in and sleep in. Usually it's used like a tiny, tiny hotel room. But some businesses that are very large actually have these installed so you can get a full hour's sleep for your lunch break. But then you're going to work 12 hours anyway, so it kind of sucks. Uh, actually, sleeping during job time is not allowed. Like Sleeping during the time while you're on the clock, you don't come to work and sleep for hours and hours. Um, so that's where I feel like this is kind of always false because they're just like, sleeping in the job is okay. It's like, yeah, it's okay to take a nap. But almost any country, if you want to go out to your car and take a nap during your lunch break, most companies don't mind. Even in America, we don't care. Number six, tentacle porn. Isn't this just hentai in manga again? Quite literally, exactly what it sounds like. Tentacle. Envy anyone? Okay, so a long time ago, one of the most popular hentai mangas, as this little article is calling them, um, was one that involved some tentacle porn. It uh, actually got even famous as a anime first and then was made into a manga, I believe. Or it might be vice versa. I don't actually know the total history of this. After that one was made, it was so popular that many, many people copied this style, which is often done in Japan. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but almost every ghost in every movie in Japan is a girl wearing all white with black long hair in front of her face. Um, this is pretty typical that if something is popular in Japan, many other people copy it. That one little manga or anime with tentacle porn was very popular and it was copied by a lot of people, hence you see it throughout Japan. Number seven, at, now at the same time though, please, please realize the average Japanese person thinks that is weird, okay? The average Japanese person is like, oh, I can't wait to read my load of tentacle porn today. Like that's that's not something that happens in Japan. They, they think other people who read stuff like that are a bit strange. Um, it's kind of confined to like fetish type stuff. Seven, vending machines that distribute, among other things, live lobsters in panties. Okay, so... We're going to get this right once and for all, okay, people? There is a difference between vending machines and capsule machines. If we're going to count every capsule machine in Japan as a vending machine, then yes, there are thousands of weird fucking things that you can get in vending machines in Japan. But if you think of a vending machine as the type of thing that gives you a Coke or looks like the type of machine that gives you a Coke or a soft drink or a tea, then no, these don't exist in Japan, okay? First of all, even the regulations around giving out used panties and stuff like that are against health code. They're against the World Health Organization, who, okay? There are actually underground Yakuza groups who run their own porno rings who do include panties sometimes in porno mags that are supposedly quote-unquote used, but, you know, that's really up for question if that's true or not. The thing they're showing here is kind of an arcade machine, like a UFO catcher where the arm comes down and grabs it for the lobster. And yeah, these exist, but these exist at like these weird little fishing holes that are kind of built in the middle of the city that are there for fun and games. Um, if you really want to count these as a vending machine, fine. But then also realize then America has condom vending machines. That's right. If you go into the, some bathrooms in America, we have condoms for sale that you can put a quarter in the machine and condoms come out. So we have condom vending machines. Also, we have tampon vending machines. That's right. Some women's bathrooms have machines where you can put in a quarter and a tampon comes out. So isn't America even fucking crazier? We've got tampon vending machines. You, you see the ridiculousness of this? Eight, the strangest Kit Kat flavors ever. This is true. There are some rather unusual Kit Kat combinations. Now, the reason behind this is because the word Kit Kat sounds very close to a word in Japanese that means like do your best for a test. So oftentimes 
these were given out right before people would take exams that would allow them to enter the next level of schooling. For example, an elementary school final test to get into junior high school, and junior high school on up to high school and college, etc. This became very endearing to buy the KitKat bar, and even to the point that on the back of the KitKat bar, there's space left for you to write a message that says something like, Gambate, ne? You know, something like that, telling the person to try their best, do their best, and get the best grade they possibly can. The KitKat, because of that, became very popular and spread out into many, many different flavors and everything so that it can even be customized. Yes, there is actually a KitKat factory here in Japan. You can go on a tour in and get a custom-made KitKat there. So I will say 100% that is true. Number nine, people being offended if you tip. Mm, not offended, but if you try to tip in Japan, they will literally chase you down and give you your money back. And that's just out of politeness. That's out of customer service. So, I mean, I've never seen someone be like, what the hell? In general, you would really have to go out of your way to offend a Japanese person because for the most part, um, they're not very hostile. They're very polite, and especially when it comes to customer service, the customer is king, and they will do anything and everything to make sure you are satisfied. Getting angry at the customer, probably not going to get you that raise you want. Number 10, getting evicted from your final resting place. So I've got to read this one. I don't know much about this. Because space is such a commodity in Japan, the space that you occupy is a very serious premium, both when you're alive and when you're dead. So much so that if for some reason your family can't continue to pay on your tomb, you will be moved from your tomb. Um, yeah, I think that's true. If you do not complete um, the loan that you've taken out, for where you're buried, uh, that is actually definitely true. I mean, mind you, everybody in Japan by law is cremated. You cannot be buried as a full body in Japan. There is no ward in Japan where it is legal to bury a full body. Um, you have to be cremated 100% of the time. So there's no such thing as someone being buried in a full coffin. I think there's a few bodies all the way back from Edo era where that may have happened, uh, like princesses and kings and stuff like that. But these days, in modern times, you are 100% of the time cremated and put into an urn. Um, that urn is then buried, but if for some reason they evicted you, they're just literally giving you the urn back. They're not just like, fuck these ashes and throw them somewhere, okay? So, <laughs> number 11, people outright avoid saying no directly. Ah, this is true. Ah, this can be a frustrating aspect of living in Japan. So, Outright saying no is considered quite rude in Japan. To tell a person, no, you can't do that, um, is considered pretty aggressive. So, for example, even if you were to say something like, Hey, dude, the sky is magenta! A Japanese person might look up at it and be like, Hmm, maybe. Maybe that's what you see. They're not going to be like, No, you are an idiot. Shut up. Okay? They will literally do the most passive way they can. They will even say things like, If it's totally 100% not possible, like if you're like, I think today I'm going to go flying with my arms. They'll say things like, maybe uh, that is not so possible. They won't outright say like, no, you are totally stupid. Don't try to do that. Okay. So that is a very true statement. And it's the same in English and in Japanese. No matter which language they're talking to you in, they will do their best to try and avoid saying outright no. They will try to give you hints. Like if you're like, today for my lesson in class, I'm going to dance around naked. They'll be like, ah. Scotto sensei, and maybe not uh, such a good idea. Okay, number twelve, people who are paid to push on public transit. Okay, so they're showing a picture here of the Tokyo trains, the JR line, which is one of the busiest lines in all of Tokyo, and uh, the station managers are helping to push people on the train. Um, <laughs> you know, like the trains are packed in Japan when it comes to Tokyo and Osaka because these are the most population dense cities. Now, you're not going to see something like this happen in the countryside. The trains are few and far between and the people are few and far between. Um, this may happen during rush hour that they want to push people in and this is mostly due to the fact that they don't want like purses and backpacks or people's arms or appendages caught in the closing doors because unlike some other countries in Europe where the door will keep opening up again if someone's there. In Japan, they will just close and they will stay closed. And then I guess if you went through a tunnel or something, maybe you'd break your arm off. I've never seen that actually happen. I haven't heard any reports of that happening, but most likely this is for safety. Yeah, they are packed to the point that people are almost spilling out, but for the most part, this is done for safety, not because they're like, hey, you guys wanna be sardines? All right, let's move on to the next one. 
13 rental wedding guests oh yeah i saw this on here and i've never actually heard of this um another interesting career choice somewhere between prostitute and actor is the sakura or decoy mm, i think they're using sakura in the wrong way i've heard of sakura boys i've never heard of just someone called a sakura as a decoy sakura literally translates into cherry blossom Sakura specialize in social skills and interaction with others and lend their services at a fee to people who need guests for their wedding, people to attend business meetings, and also to fill up restaurants to make them seem desirable. Okay, okay. There is a certain aspect of this. This is true. There is a word in Japanese. I don't remember it right now. That means the store that forms the line outside is a popular store. And sometimes to get a product out there, people will pay. I don't know. if I wouldn't call them decoys. I would say stand-ins, extras. I don't know. Sakura, I don't think so, um, to stand in line and wait to buy something. When the Quarter Pounder came out in Japan, McDonald's paid a bunch of people to stand in line and buy the Quarter Pounder. When Krispy Kreme opened in Japan, they paid a ton of people to stay in line and buy Krispy Kreme. This is because when people see that giant line forming, they want to buy whatever is inside. It happens. It's part of Japan's culture. Popular things get bought. People want popular things. Cat cafes. Yes, cat cafes exist. There's also owl cafes. Did you know that one? I bet you didn't know that one. Um, I'm thinking about starting up a gaijin cafe. What do you guys think? People can come in and pet us? Be like, ooh, kawaii ne. Uh, let's see, number 15, the cult of Obama. Okay, this is some BS here. That's right, folks. While Barack Obama might split the nation at home in terms of approval, that isn't the case in Japan. Although it's not fair to say that every Japanese citizen is infatuated he has been established as a bit of a cult following, kind of like campy horror movies or Tommy Wiseau films. He made the movie The Room. If you've never seen it, don't waste your time. <laughs> so much do people love him. Wow, that is written horrible. So much do people love him. That is, I'm verbatim reading. So much do people love him that they actually produce Obama action figures. No, they don't. If they if they do, it is at a one shop in the middle of nowhere, Tokyo or something. I've never seen a damn Obama doll. Now, there was a Japanese comedian when Obama became president who <laughs> – he slightly looked like Obama, and that was his big comedy shtick, and he stuck with it forever, and he's still doing it today, and it's really not very funny. And all he can say is, yes, we can in English, and that's it. Um, if you find that hilarious, maybe you'll join this cult. Number 16, our final one, streets with no names. Yeah, the streets in Japan have no names. I know. I know. Yes, it's true. And it sucks. It's making, it makes finding places really hard. Now, there are major highways, like Mitosuji has its own name, obviously, because it's a giant major highway here in Osaka. So people know that. But yeah, streets have no names in Japan. Um, and even the zip code system is total BS. It's like these pie shapes as far as like how they're scattered out throughout the city so they're not very helpful either um if you go into a taxi or any kind of vehicle in japan almost 100 percent of the time um it's got a gps and that's how you get around um guys that is 16 things that are crazy wacky about japan some of them are true some of them weren't some were exaggerations for the most part i'd say this really this isn't too bad of a list i think they did pretty good here um they weren't too wild, okay? I didn't see any fucking tent umbrellas or, like, microwavable puppy, puppies for the, your microwave, which I saw on List 25, which is, I've never seen it. Or the baby mop, a mop you attach to your baby. It doesn't exist. If you ever see things like that in Japan where it's, like, this weird invention, oh, it's the ramen dip. It goes around your face, and if you eat ramen, it splatters on it. That's from a famous uh catalog that this guy who takes all these patents out and makes all these crazy inventions he makes this catalog every year with new crazy stuff he's made up and sometimes people pick that up and are like japan's invented this and uses it every day you know on the subway we have chin rest so you can take a nap standing up ha <laughs> ha no doesn't exist um so that being said, guys, those are 16 things you'll only see in Japan. That is from Diply.com. I will put a link here to the article if you want to read it yourself. If you liked what you saw here today, please like, comment, and subscribe. I am unrested with the questions you requested. This is JFAC, Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. Have a good one.